Marshall from the great state of Kansas. Welcome to you, Senator. The Senate is known for being a little less combative than the House. So is there a bipartisan sense that the political rhetoric is getting out of control? And if so, is there a bipartisan sense on how to lower the temperature? Well, Trey, uh, great to see you. And yes, I, I do think that the temperature is a little bit lower on the Senate side. And I think that's because there's only 100 of us. We sit down with each other often. We travel together. We invite each other to our, our state. So I do think it's, it's being turned down once the cameras are turned off. But the 24-7 news cycle, social media bombarding you with, with algorithms that, that feed your own narrative, it makes it a pretty tough situation to be in right now. All right, so I, I want to draw down a little bit on the Secret Service. What do you want to know from the Secret Service about the shooting in Pennsylvania that you currently do not know? What What is like number one and two on your list of things that the Senate's entitled to, but the Secret Service isn't giving you? Well, Trey, I think so. We want complete transparency and a timely report. But I know enough now to realize that the Secret Service is broken, that, that it is a very dysfunctional organization. We already know they had a bad plan. They implemented it even worse. Communication was non-existent. We know that there's been almost a 50% turnover in the Secret Service uh, employees recently as well, that, that barely half of them respect senior leadership. That's why since day one, I've called for the White House to appoint a crisis management team to go in there and turn this place upside down. I, I think of a John Radcliffe, somebody like that, going in there, cleaning house and starting over. We know enough already. Yes, we need all, all the details. I'd like to know what the psychological condition of this uh, assailant was. What is exactly where his motives? Is there anybody else involved? But we don't need to wait on that report. Let's take action now. All right, let's you and I listen to the acting director talk about history, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. We're at a pivotal moment in the history of the Secret Service and at a pivotal moment in the history of our country. And I've directed that the Secret Service embark on a significant paradigm shift that will redefine how we conduct protective operations. It's important that we hold ourselves accountable for the failures of July 13th and that we use the lessons learned to make sure that we do not have another failure like this again. All right, you mentioned John Lee Ratcliffe. Back when he and I were federal prosecutors, Secret Service was under Treasury, but not Homeland. Do, do you think he should stay where it is and get better, be moved and get better? What, what would you do if you were that crisis manager that you just nominated John Ratcliffe to be? Well, Trey, I think we need smarter people than me to go down those different rat hole, rabbit holes. But there's a famous book that says you cannot serve two masters. And I don't think the Secret Service can, can serve DHS as well as their primary mission. I really think we should talk, think about turning this back over to the OMB, the White House Office of Management and Budget. They'd be right there at the White House with their primary focus. Too often, uh, we, we let our goals, we let our primary focus expand too much. Uh, and, and I think that's the challenge here is that Secret Service is trying to serve too many masters. And I think it's probably time to move them. You know, you, my dad, both at the same time, my dad, a career police officer, had this same idea yesterday saying, is it time for them after 23 years? Is there a better home for the Secret Service? All right. I know you did not practice psychiatry, but you're a medical doctor nonetheless, which means you're smarter than I am. Is there something we should be doing for the mentally ill other than just waiting for them to commit a crime and putting them in jail? I mean, it just seems to be an epidemic of people like Ruth and others who need help. And we shouldn't wait until after they try to kill somebody to provide that. Yeah, you know, Trey, we, we are seeing an epidemic of mental health challenges across the country. I want to emphasize that most people with a mental health problem are not violent, but many people that are violent have mental health problems. They typically have some type of an anti, uh, anti-social -so personality disorder. They have a disregard for law and order. They have no remorse after they break the crime, those types of things. We need to identify those people and reach out to them, get them into our community health centers for more mental health benefits. 
Senator Roger Marshall from the great state of Kansas, who also happens to be a medical doctor. We look forward to having you back for updates on both Secret Service and on what we can do about the mental health crisis in our country. Thank you for joining us on